Greetings in Jesus' name. Today, we will hear a message from the death of God by our master teacher, Apostle Jeremiah Cummings, entitled, Flourishing in the Face of Famine, Fear, and Opposition. Praise God. What a word. Amen, amen. God bless everybody around the world. Um, I am so honored to be alive and well and strong in the Word of God. I want to thank all of you who have been with us for the last two years on Sundays and Thursdays. And we will only be broadcasting in 2021 on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm going to say that again. We will only be broadcasting now going into 2021. <laughs> I guess you could say this is really the turning point, ain't it? <laughs> we will only be broadcasting on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. I'm going to be doing a series entitled how to give birth to a God. Amen. How to give birth to a God. When God created man, that word man in the book of Genesis does not mean a physical being. That, man, man, that, that word man simply means God created a spiritual mind. He didn't form the, he didn't form the physical until Genesis 2 and 7. Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 7, it reads, And God formed man from the dust of the earth and, and breathed into man, Ruah, the breath of God. Man became a living soul. And so God's whole aim was from the beginning to make a carbon copy of himself. I said some things on the last broadcast that some had to scratch their heads over. I said that number six day man meant that the number six represents incompletion or death. So God knew that Adam would die. That means he will be separated from God because of his own um, thinking and his own reasoning. But God didn't change his mind. See, he was incomplete. If he was complete, he would have never fallen. Amen. If he was complete, he would have he would not have aborted his potential. The completion of the will of God is in Christ Jesus. It's in the Bible. If you ain't told a page out, it says in Colossians chapter number 2 and verse number 10, and you are complete, notice the word, and you are complete in Him. Listen to me. So that Adam was incomplete. That Adam, through him, death reign, but we are complete in him, according to Colossians chapter number 2 and verse number 10, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principalities and power, amen, and when you become complete in him, that means nothing is missing, amen, you are complete in him. And in Him we live and move and have our being. And the glory that God wanted man to be in the beginning, but He could not be, that glory is upon us. Can a gay man? When Jesus came in John, and in, in His prayer, John chapter number 17 and verse number 22, Jesus prayed, and the glory which you have given to me, I have given to them. For what reason, Jesus? That they may be one, even as we are one. Then he said, they become a carbon copy of God. He said, I in them. 
and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. God is raising us up in spiritual power in the year 2021. Won't be a broke soul if you keep eating this word of God. How does God, amen, allow uh, even us to give birth to a God? He feeds us. His word, he says in Jeremiah 3 and 15, I will raise up among you spiritual shepherds who will feed you with knowledge and, uh, and true understanding. I thank God that he has chosen us to feed you so that you can grow up into him and reign on this planet as he intended for you to reign in the, be in the beginning. In the book of uh, Revelation 5 and, and verse number 10, he said he has made us kings and priests and we shall reign. My God, my God. God began to express to me that that word reign means I set my mind on a definite goal. And when I set my mind on a definite goal, the whole world has to step aside and let me pass. Nothing can stand in the way of your progress. And even in the most critical times, and we are in the most critical times right now. There never was a day. They said more deaths. There never been this many deaths in the history of America. Amen. Uh, six times the deaths of the Vietnam War. And the Vietnam War lasted for 10 years. And in less than a year, America has lost over 330,000 souls to a death angel called the Kenora virus. Beloved, you're going to prosper. You're going to flourish. God promised it. And God will fulfill it. He promised that you're going to flourish. He called you righteous. Good God Almighty. Because you have been seeking the righteousness of God. Amen. The righteousness of God is the character of God. And the more word you get, the more you're transformed into the character of God that you begin to speak as God would speak. You begin to act as God would act. You begin to think as God would think. You begin to have victory as God has victory. Come on. He don't just give you the victory. Amen. He makes you the victory. Amen. As you begin to feed on the victorious promises of God. Good God Almighty. He said you're going to flourish. In the book of Psalms 92 and verse number 12, he said the righteous will flourish. That word flourish means that they will have unstoppable progress. The righteous shall flourish like the date palm. Amen. Tree, long live, upright, and useful. Amen. We're going to be used for God's glory. We're going to be used to turn lives around. We're going to be used to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, and to shelter the homeless. We can't depend on a system that is on fire. Amen. Politically, economically, socially, good God Almighty, educationally, even religiously, we can't depend. Amen. You may think that I uh, am a little rough on you, but if God really wanted to show the power of his church, the church of God would flourish in the midst of, my God, a pandemic. If God really wanted to, if the church was in line with the will and the and, and, and the will of God, the church will be flourishing. You'll still have 30,000 people coming to church and no virus will touch them. Nothing will, but God shut everything down because we come to the turning point. God got to a point where he said, I can't let this go on no more. And his timing was perfect. Amen. According to the scriptures. And so God is not creating church folks. God is making you and me a carbon copy of himself dwelling on earth. Not to brag about it but to go to work. 
Amen. The Bible calls us his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. His masterpiece, created in Christ Jesus. Directing on the path. He directed us on the path that we would take. You may not have been born in Canada. You may not have been born in uh, Illinois. You may not have been born. No, but God guided you so that you could be in the right place at the right time. My God, my God. So God is telling me to tell you that you are going to flourish in the face of famine, in the face of fear, in the face of opposition, because God ain't making you to be a church folk people. God is making you to be a carbon copy of him, and you are complete in him. According to Colossians chapter number um, 2 and verse number 10, we are complete in him. Apart from him, we are incomplete. But we are complete in him who is the head of all principalities and power. God knew that if he was going to reproduce himself, that he would have to feed us his word. Listen to me. He would have to send spiritual shepherds. Amen. Who had his heart to feed us. It's like that in the book of Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse number 15 in the Amplified Virgin. I will, I will give you spiritual shepherds which will feed you with knowledge and true understanding. Another part of that scripture said, and they will lack nothing. We will have everything that we want. Amen. A house ain't nothing for God. A car ain't nothing for God. Good God Almighty. Amen. Money ain't nothing for God. He said we would have complete peace, complete joy, complete wealth, complete health. Amen. Amen. So, he feeds us. Amen and amen. He feeds us with exceeding great and precious promises so that we could take on his knowledge. That's why David could be Goliath. Because David knew that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. David knew that the Lord was his shepherd and he would not have a need that God would not fulfill. David knew that surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. David knew that yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Look, Death is all around us right now. The shadows of death is everywhere. And we have made an effort to stay out of the shadows of death called viruses. Amen. God is directing our path. In uh, God's power is given to us through promises. Can I teach this? He says in 2 Peter chapter number 1, 3 and 4, His divine power has given unto us everything we need for a godly life. His divine power. Well, where is His power at? I'm going to show you where His power is. He has, his divine power has given unto us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him. The knowledge of Him who has called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises that through them you may participate and become partners of his divine nature. That word divine nature means that I would become a carbon copy of his nature. Amen. I will become a carbon copy of himself manifested in human form. Y'all better get this. Becoming a carbon copy of God himself in human form. Now, that ain't nothing to brag about. Because to whom much is given, much is required. And that's why I thank God. I know we on this. That's why we have Helping Hands Restorations down in Mississippi. Because to whom much is given, much is required. We will be the builders of a new world. 
called the kingdom of God, whom this world has rejected. Now, I'm telling you, but I thank God that God got some hidden ones, millions that this world don't even know about. He's got a hundred billion angels who he has given charge over us to keep us in all of our ways. Amen. Who, who will God and protect us? Read Hebrews 1, verse number 14. For he tells us that the angels of spirit sent to accompany us, to help us, to protect us, to guard us, is in the New Testament, is in the Bible. When you eat all of this word, you're being transformed into God's glory. You're being changed. Amen. That's why the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And old things pass away. He ain't the same person. He ain't the same human being. Amen. He's a, he's a duplication of what he eats. Jeremiah said, thy word was found and I did eat them. And thy word became the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. I'm not going to be long because I'm going to get ready for Thursday night. But whenever God gets ready to bring forth a miracle, it begins in darkness. I'm going to say that again. Whenever God gets ready to bring forth a miracle, it begins in darkness. Your birth began in darkness. Your new birth began when you came into the light. And whenever God wants to bring forth a miracle. That miracle begins in darkness. In Isaiah chapter number 60, you see that. In verse number 2, when God says, Arise and shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. He says in verse number 2, Darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness shall cover the people. He said, But his glory shall be seen Upon you. Where did the glory come from? The glory came out of the darkness. Amen. Amen. And you and I have come out of the darkness. It says in the book of um, in the book of Isaiah, chapter number nine, and verse number two, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. And they that dwell upon the shadows. Uh, upon the shadows of death, upon them has the light shine. And so, beloved, God is sending a light called truth into the world. And I was taught that truth is so powerful that it would knock the brains out of Satan. And as long as you walk in truth, amen, as long as you talk truth, as long as you live in truth, there is no weapon formed against you that will be able to prosper. Good God Almighty. So God's whole aim. Is that you be filled. With. His fullness. Amen. Amen. That's why Joseph couldn't stay in the pit. Joseph was filled. With the fullness of God. That fullness of God came about. From a promise that God had given him. That's why Joseph couldn't stay in the prison. Because Joseph was filled with the fullness of God, meaning God's word was in him. And God's word was leading him on a path to go to the palace and become the prince of Egypt, the governor, second in command over the whole household, the whole household, the whole household of Pharaoh. My God, my God, you better stop. I'm speaking tongues in a minute. Listen. Look in Ephesians, and I'm going to get more into this on Thursday night. Now remember, we will not be on next Sunday, but we will be on next Thursday, and every Thursday after that. Hey Amen. I, uh, I was born on a Thursday. August the 23rd, 1951 was on a Thursday. A lot of things have occurred on Thursdays. And many of you in many of your lives you just don't remember, or if you go back and check it, Thursday is a special day. It is the center of a week. Oh yeah. Amen. And God works like that. So listen, I don't want to get into that teaching because that's a whole nother realm. In Ephesians chapter number three, 
verse number 19, the Apostle Paul prayed that you may come to know practically through personal experience, that you may come to know through personal experience the love of Christ, which far surpasses knowledge without experience. You know how much Christ loves you because you have experienced his love. Amen. You could have been homeless. You could have been hungry. You could have been no clothes to wear. You could have been dead. But you experienced the love of Christ. And he said the only way that you would know is through personal experience. That is Ephesians chapter number 3 and verse number 19. That you may be filled, listen to me, that you may be filled up throughout your being into all the fullness of God. That's the will of God. That you may be filled up through your whole being with the fullness of God. And that you may have the richest experience of God's presence in your life. How rich can you get? To have the richest experience of God's presence. That means God is present in your life. In living color. He dwells in you. As he said in 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 6. And verse number 16. He said I will dwell in them. I will walk in them. They will be my people. And I will be their God. God dwelt in Daniel. The lions could eat him. God dwelt in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. How did he dwell in them? They knew his word. They ate his word. They nourished on his word. So long we've been hearing the saying that you are what you eat. Well, if God is the word, and the beginning was the word, and the word was God, then if I eat the word, what am I going to become? I'm going to become a manifestation of God on the planet. And just like the mother feeds the baby milk, God feeds you the milk of his word. Amen. The book of Ephesians says, Seek ye the pure milk of the word that you may grow. Listen, I could go on and on and on. But my new series given to me from God himself, he said, teach them how do you give birth to a God. How to give birth to a God. Well, you got to be fed the word. And you got to be serious about it. You know, it's nothing to play with. Amen. And that's the whole reason why God's promised, I'm going to put my word in your mouth. In Jeremiah. Chapter number 1 and verse number 9. Then the Lord stretched out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, hear me. I have put my words in your mouth. For what? In Isaiah 51 and verse number 16. I have put my words in your mouth and have covered you in the shadow of my hand. To establish the renewed heavens and to lay the foundations of the renewed earth and say unto my people, you are mine. Beloved, I'm excited about 2021. Be with us on New Year's Eve. Thursday, the 31st of December, 7 p.m. Be with us as we begin how to give birth to a God. You know, a lot of people have not read enough to understand that I that Psalms 82 and verse number 6 says, Ye are all gods. Children of the most high God. He said in that scripture, but you shall die as men. Why would they die as men? Because they're not being fed and they're not receiving the word of God. The prophets became corrupt in the Old Testament. 
They were not feeding the people. And that's why when Jesus came and he was coming out uh, of the tomb and he met with his disciples. And even before then, he said, Peter, feed my sheep. In other words, the people have to be fed. And we have been uh, leaning towards entertainment and praise and worship and jumping and shouting and hollering and screaming. That ain't what God called us for. He called us to come into the knowledge of becoming a carbon copy of himself in human form. So he called them gods in Psalms 82 and verse number 6. But between Malachi and Matthew, gross darkness was upon the earth. I told you everything comes out of darkness. Between Malachi and Matthew was 400 years of gross darkness. Light didn't come until 430 years later, and he is called Christ the Messiah, the light of the world. And he came to make you what he is. He said, you are the light of the world. Let your light so shine that other men might see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. I'm closing, but I ain't done yet. In John chapter number 10 and verse number 35 in the Amplified Version, if he called them gods, listen to this. I want you to get this real good. If he called them gods, men to whom the word of God came, who did he call gods? Men unto whom the word of God came. Well, we got it. And we're going to feed you the word of God. Amen, amen. And, you, and by feeding you the word of God, it will change your nature. It will change your character. It will change your power. It will change your wisdom. It will change you and me to become a carbon copy huh, of God manifested in human form. You know why? Because we can't depend on a government. You see the condition that the people are in? You, we can't depend on the government. We can't depend on the educational system. We can't depend. If we if we if we did that, we become we become prisoners in the promised land. We got to depend on the God that is living on the inside of us, so that we can become so wealthy that when people need money, we can supply it. When people need clothes, we can supply it. When people need an education, we can supply it. Come on, talk back to me. And there is no greater education in the world than the Word of God. Science is in the Bible. Mathematics is in the Bible. Geography is in the Bible. Come on, everything is in the Scriptures. Beloved, I'm excited about 2021 and how to give birth to a God and become the repairs of the breach and the dwellers of places to dwell in, waste places to dwell in. We've seen the chaos. Amen. And we can't depend on nobody but God. Amen. A bomb just went off in Nashville on Christmas Day. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this world, amen, this world and this system has come to an end time result. And God has spared us. He has raised us up to become a carbon copy of himself and to flourish in this life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. Psalms 92 and verse number 12. The righteous will flourish like the date palm tree and live long, upright, and be useful. That's a promise. And I thank God for all of you. I will be posting 
on the School of the Prophets University more often. I will be posting there. I want to thank God for 960 students at the School of the Prophets University. That's right, 960 students at the School of the Prophets University. And if you're not a part of the School of the Prophets University, you need to get on there and get approved. I just approved someone last night. Amen. We're, we're proving, we are approving people from Israel. We are approving people from Indonesia, from Germany, from Canada. Amen. From all over the United States. We are approving them for the School of the Prophets University. Now 960 strong. I want you to support us as we move forward. Oh, there's so much that is, is going to be happening in 2021, we're going to need to be off on Sundays. We may have to travel. We may have to go into California. You know, uh, there, there's going to be so much happening. My book is being taken up by great publishers now. You know, that's what I've been waiting on. The right publishing, the right marketing, the right strategy, and the professionals who can make it happen on a worldwide scale. Well, we got it. And it's getting ready to happen. We need your support. You can go to the Cash App and be a blessing. I want to thank those who have been sowing this week. Sowing for the, ho for the holidays to us and this ministry. I want to say thank you. You know who you are. Amen. Go to dollar sign. That's a Cash App. Dollar sign SGM920. Dollar sign SGM920. Amen. Amen. Dollar sign SGM920. Or go to Shabbat Global Ministries. Amen. ShabbatGlobalMinistries.com. Go there and enjoy that website and make your donations there. I want to thank God for all of you. Amen. To our ambassador, Zalma, up in Canada. Amen. To Noah. I saw him playing with all of his gifts. Amen. We were blessed to be able to get him something really nice. And we thank God for Chris and for Tia and for Sister Joe Thomas and Brenda Stacer, we thank you for your seed. We thank all of you. Amen. The Madisons down in, um, uh, in Tennessee. Amen. They were not close to the Nashville uh, explosion. We thank God for putting y'all a little further west of that. So we thank God for all of you. We thank God for my daughters who blessed me with Panera Bread and um, coupons or greeting, or greeting cards and um, I thank God for my daughters in Washington, D.C., in Temple, Maryland, amen, who were blessing me with Starbucks, <laughs> Starbucks cards and Pan, uh, Pan uh, Dara. We thank Panera, God. Panera. Panera. <laughs> Pan Pandera. Pandera. You, you think about the pandemic. <laughs> okay. All right. Amen. But look, remember now, Thursday night, 7 o'clock Central Standard Time, we'll be here. Sunday, we're going to be busy. And you're going to see how busy we are when you start seeing stuff showing up on television and you start seeing stuff showing up all over the uh, Barnes and Nobles and, you know, um, all, everywhere. It's getting ready to happen. It is the turning point. And guess what? Can I say this? The turning point has turned. Okay. The turning point has turned. Your life will never be the same. Oh no, 2021, you're gonna flourish. God bless you, and we love you, and we thank God for you. I wanna thank God for my wonderful wife, Dr. Gloria Maria Cummins, who has been a wonderful help me, to help me meet my obligation to God. I thank God for all of you and your prayers. Let me tell you that your prayers have been working. Or like my Uncle Hachi used to say, wecking. Your prayers are wecking. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Enjoy the rest of your week. Amen. We'll see you on Thursday night with how to give birth to a God. God bless you.